Alhamdulillah Hirabil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd The takfiris and the neo-khawarij never cease to amaze me That you won't find a people who constantly seek to distort, innovate in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to suit their desires more than them. And as we mentioned before, some of the reasons people uh, go astray with regards to the religion of Islam, the reason, uh, the assas of ikhtilaf or, or, or differences, one of the reasons is jahil, is ignorance. So ignorance of what? Of the nusus. Another point of reason why people go astray is also because of their hawa, because of their desires, meaning that they are inclined towards an opinion or a view or a hizb or an ideology, and that overtakes their whole being, meaning they're consumed by that ideology, that hizb, that leader, that fatwa, that rai, that opinion, whatever it is, and they let that overtake them over the nusus of the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Another reason why people go astray is that they uh, also blindly follow their leaders and they only accept part of the religion. For example, you have some groups and sects, they only call to one aspect of religion. Some particular groups, they call only to the prayer. Some groups, some of the neo takfiri groups, they only call to either rebelling against the Muslim authority or making takfir of the Muslim authority or making takfir of their brothers and sisters in Islam and causing wanton violence. This is the thing that they emphasize, which is not actually a part of uh, Islam, this wanton violence violence and so forth but this is in accordance with what their desires so their hawa is overtaken them and they've only tried to take an aspect of the religion they distorted the principles of jihad and they try to apply it upon the muslims let's see what allah says about this type of ideology in these type of individuals qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem fi surah al-ali imran qala subhana bada a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim huwa alladhi anzala alayka al-kitaba minhu ayatun محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهات فما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه من ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويل وما يعلم وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أول الباب الله سبحانه who Ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem in surah ali imran Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says when discussing about the people of desires and the people of shubahat he says first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself he says he is the one who sent down uh, to to you this book the book meaning the Quran in it are verses basic or fundamental, meaning of established meaning, they're unambiguous. They are the foundation, they form the foundation of the book. Others are not well, are, others are ambiguous in meaning, meaning that they have many different meanings. But those in whose heart is perverse, or is perversity, follow the part thereof that is not of well-established meaning, meaning that is not uh, dealing with the rulings in Islam, but rather dealing with uh, things that could be ambiguous, have more than one meaning. Uh, seeking discord. Why do they do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, seeking discord and searching for its hidden meanings. Why do they search for hidden meanings? In order to fit their desires, in order to fit their, pen, their, their opinions, and in order to fit their minhaj or their methodology and understanding and practicing in Islam. But no one knows its true meanings except the law. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in the book, the whole of it is from our Lord and none will grasp the, mes uh, the message except men of understanding. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those people whose hearts have deviated and they follow the verses that, have, that are Im ambiguous in meanings in order to fit their madhab, in order to fit their hizb, in order to fit their methodology and, and their uh, to 
support their ideology or fikr, which may or may not have anything to do with Islam. This is the case of the Tekfiris. And the reason why I, I mentioned this, especially about those people, there has come to me, uh, a person sent me a clip of Sheikh al-Albani, where some of the tekfiris try to use this clip to say to support their tekfir of the of muslim rulers and this in the the the, the clip sheikh al-albani al-imam one of the great imams of ahl sunnah uh, in this time a muhaddith as the sheikh abdul masan al-abad said that no one he said the talib al-ilm la yastaghni an kutub al-albani he said that the student of knowledge cannot do without these books of Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, this muhaddith, this imam of Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah. In this clip, Shaykh al-Albani, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned, and he was criticizing the uh, opinion of the Saudi, uh, the, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, for bringing in the American troops, for bringing in non-Muslims to defend uh, their lands and, and, and cease the fitna of the time of the Gulf War of what Saddam Hussein was doing when he invaded Kuwait, the Hezbollah, the communist uh, nationalist uh, party of Saddam Hussein. And Sheikh al-Albani, his view was very strong and that he did not support that. And I, if I recall, Sheikh uh, Mukbil bin Hadi uh, al-Wadi'i, Allah yarhamahu, also one of our great imams of Ahl sunnah in this time, a great muhaddith uh, in this time, also did not support this. But the scholars in Saudi, like Imam bin Baz, another imam of Ahl sunnah and others supported this, supported this, uh, this uh, view. And they gave what? Evidence based on Kitabillah, wa based on Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, wa la shak fi thalik. And there is no doubt about this. And for those people who want to go more into depth, they need to go to the Arabic text to go into this. Walillah alhamd, I spent some time studying this, and so we're not really going to talk so much about that issue, but we're going to talk about how these people have distorted the speech of Shaykh al Albani. Shaykh al Albani did not, he criticized the view, he did not agree with it, but he made no reference to takfir, he made no reference to rebellion and khuruj, because that goes against the nasus, that goes against the ijma the salaf al-salih. Go back to the books, go to Sahih Muslim, in Shar uh, Sahih Muslim, Imam Nawawi, and look at those, I believe I counted no less than about 104 hadith in the chapter of Imara. And you'll find what? You'll find those hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who is our Imam, whose goal, whose statement supersedes everyone. Uh, that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Asa'i wa ta'ala marri al-Muslim fi ma yuhibbu wa, wa kariya. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in countless hadith, a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, to hear and obey the, the ruler in what you like and what you dislike, as long as he doesn't tell you to do masiyah, to do sinfulness, disobedience to a law. And if he commands you to do disobedience, then there's no hearing and obeying in that particular task or that command. But that does not nullify the sam'i wa ta'a ala mar'i al-Muslim. And that is the fahm of the Salaf al Go back to the books, there's countless texts to uh, substantiate that. Back to the, 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 the issue at hand. It is unfortunate that these individuals have followed what? Their vain desires and, and distorting what Sheikh al-Albani said. And by no means from a person of intellect could you have deduced those conclusions except unless you're jahil, except unless you don't know Arabic, except unless you just, you, you're supporting your, your madhab, your madhab of what? What did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he's our imam, first and foremost, what did he say about the people who make takfir unjustly the people the first original sect qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam al khawarij kilab an nar al khawarij 
Kilab and Nar. The Khawarij, the people who make takfir without the Dawabit, meaning the criterion, without the Shurut, meaning the conditions, without the Mu'ani, without looking at the Mu'ani before you make takfir on Mu'ayyan, as we spoke about in our other lectures, about making a hukum on a specific individual or group of individuals, that you have to look at those things which prohibit takfir, making takfir of them. And Aqama Ali al Hujjah. Go back to the books of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Go back to the books of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, and you'll find ittifaq that you must aqama tukimu hujjah ala al shakhs ma'ayin before takfir. That you must make provide the evidence before you make takfir of a particular individual or what have you before you uh, try to practice that ruling of takfir on that individual. Going back to the matter of hand, that these people follow their shubahat. Look at the end result of most of these uh, mubtadi'un. People like Abu Hamza al-Misri. Now he's going to America, he's shipped to America and they're dealing with him. May Allah guide him back to the haq and may Allah protect him from their harm. Uh, 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 Faisal as well, Faisal uh, Jamaiki, a radical takfiri, a, a man who his takfir is so wild and unrestrained in the way that we drink water, this man takes makes the takfir. And go back to his tapes and you'll find countless evidences. The man sounded almost, not uh, almost without, uh, how can I articulate it? That not just a lack of intellect uh, or any intellectual discourse, but almost some people even describe him as almost on the border of insanity. And this is what you find in a lot of his rulings. Uh, another individual to be aware of, Abu Qatar of Philistini. Throw away those tapes, burn all of them. This is another reckless takfiri, although he has more knowledge than the other two. And his level is not like their level. So we also have to know, as our Shaykh Ibrahim al Rahayli, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, has mentioned in countless times, Ahl Bid'ah Mutafawateen, wa Ahl Sunnah Mutafawateen. That Ahl Sunnah, they have different levels depending on their knowledge. And Ahl Bid'ah, they have different levels of innovation in accordance to how they deviated from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we have to look and be cautious of even wasting our time of going on those websites. They're going to continually say what they're going to say. But it's upon us to seek the ilm, to seek the knowledge. Because as Ibn al-Qayyum said, al-ilm huwa silah, that knowledge is the weapon. And it cuts and slices at the shubahat of Ahl bidah and Ahl al-Kufr and Wazandaka. If you have knowledge of the Book of Allah, and you have knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, all that feather waving that they're doing will have no no benefit. It is as if they're throwing pebbles or, or dust particles upon you, but you're under an air conditioner and it's just blowing it away, or you're in a windstorm. It has no effect. And you will be able to deal with their shubahat. So it's upon us to gain knowledge. What did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? To deal with this, to, 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 to be loved by Allah and to be... Uh, to, to, to benefit in your religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man Allahu bihi khayran din. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge of the religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man tell, man salaka tariqin yal talmisuhu bihi ilmin sahalallahu lahu bi tariqin ila jannah. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. This is what we want. We want paradise. We don't want to waste our time in vain debates. We don't want to waste our time in vain discourse. We don't want to waste our time with people who aren't even worth wasting our time on. But we ask that Allah guides us and guides them. And Allah forgives us and forgives them. And may Allah protect the ummah from the harm of ahla tikkah. Fear, with tafjir, wa ahla kufr, wa zandaka, wa ahla bid'ah, wa lahwa. May Allah protect us from them and their ahzab and their hizbiyah and their, their sectarianism and their calling to fitna with discord. And may Allah ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.